Hello friends! For today's bit of mythology, we're going to be talking about Blue Jays. Specifically, a series of myths or stories that come to us from the Chinook tribe of the Northwest Coast. Yes, Northwest Coast. Don't mind me, I'm just directionally impaired. Guess it's a good thing that we've got compasses and, and maps and things. <laughs> there are many variations of Blue Jay stories. Pretty much every tribe has their own. This is only one possible retelling, not the definitive retelling of this tale. With that minor disclaimer out of the way, let's get into it. One night, the ghosts decided to find a wife. And so they traveled to the village where Blue Jay and his sister, Aoi, lived. Meeting with their father, they settled on a bride price. And Aoi traveled to the land of the ghosts with her future husband. A year passed quietly, but Blue Jay missed his sister terribly, and so began traveling. Everyone he met on the road, he asked, Do you know where the ghosts live? Where the spirits of the dead dwell? Eventually, following the rumors and legends of his fellow travelers, he found his way to the village of the ghosts. There he was reunited with his sister. But looking around, the village was silent. As he looked into the various homes, he just saw piles of bones everywhere. Until partway through the town, his sister caught sight of him, shouted with joy and ran and embraced him, telling him that she had such a wonderful family here and began introducing him to the various piles of bones. When they reached her house, she introduced Blue Jay to her husband, Blue Jay's brother-in-law. But when Blue Jay looked, it was just a pile of bones. Blue Jay thought, there's no way this can be my brother-in-law. He's, he's dead. It's just bones. Much to Blue Jay's surprise, as soon as the sun set, the town was full of people. Loud and boisterous laughter, the sound of children running in the streets, knowing that her brother was an avid fisherman. Aoi sent her brother with one of, with one of her husband's cousins, a young boy, to go fishing. But she cautioned her brother, do not speak to him. Well, we all know how much of a chatterbox Blue Jay is. So it did not take long before Blue Jay joined in the singing, the chattering, the talking. And at first he was quite alarmed because as soon as he began speaking, the boy crumbled into a pile of bones again. But after a few moments, he reassembled himself back into his ghostly form. Blue Jay made a game of this. Once they were in the canoe, every couple of moments, turning back and speaking loudly to the boy just to watch him fall to pieces, the boy instructed him, eventually, on how to fish in their lake, to cast the net and pull it back. Much to Blue Jay's chagrin, he kept only pulling up leaves and twigs. Disappointed with his catch, he decided to bring back the twigs as he knew his sister would get cold at night, and at least it would do something for the fire. When they returned to Aoi's house, empty-handed, she asked what had happened. How You're a good fisherman. How could you have lost all the fish? He said, all I did was pull up twigs and leaves. His sister laughed. Those were the fish, silly. So she went back to the canoe and collected some from the bottom of the canoe. Some of the twigs he had saved for her fire. Blue Jay thought she was lying again, but much to his surprise, when she returned, she came carrying two large trout. He said, where did you find those? I have not found a single fish while I was fishing. He says, yes, you did. I collected these from the bottom of your canoe. The next night, Blue Jay and the boy went fishing once more, but this time he saved all the branches. And much to his delight, when they got back to shore, he had a heaping mound of fish. He was in such a good mood from having collected the fish that he couldn't help himself from exclaiming in delight every time he came across one of the villagers, only to laugh uproariously each time they collapsed into a pile of bones. Hearing of his great success, his sister met him on the shore and helped bring back the rest of the fish. 
The next night a great cry went up around the village, for a whale had beached itself. But when Blue Jay got down to the shore, all he found was a big log. He shouted at the villagers, how silly they must be, for this was just a log. But as has happened every other time he spoke to them, they collapsed into a pile of bones. After a few minutes, they rematerialized into their ghostly forms and informed him, no, this was the whale, and began stripping the bark. Seeing as they were all convinced, and knowing that the fish had been twigs, he figured, well, there must be something to this. So he stripped off two big pieces of bark and began carrying it back to his sister's hut. When he arrived, he tossed it on the ground and said, Sister, all they found is a big log. She said, No, it's the whale meat. You brought me back large amounts of blubber. Please go get some more. So he went back with his knife, but being unwilling to do all the work, when he came upon a villager, he shouted at them causing them to fall to pieces, and he quickly collected their pieces of bark and then returned to his sister, ensuring that she had more than anyone else. The next morning, Blue Jay decided to play tricks on the ghosts, knowing that during the day they were just pile of, piles of bones. He wondered what would happen if he switched a head here, a femur there. So, with great confidence, he took the head of a wizened elder and switched it with that of an infant. He took one leg of the tallest man and switched it with the shortest. That night, when they returned to their ghostly forms, he laughed uproariously as the wizened elder had the face of a baby, and the baby's head was as big as its body, and the tallest and shortest man were entirely lopsided. Eventually, the ghosts complained about his constant misbehavior. Ioe's husband told her she must send her brother away. At first he did not want to go, but eventually after much pleading, he decided, yes, sister, I suppose I shall go home and visit our parents. But when he reached the prairie, outside of the land of the dead, he encountered a great wildfire in which he was captured and burned. When he awoke, he found himself at the shores of the lake in the land of the dead. And he shouted for his sister. And she looked out and went, you have returned. And tears fell down her face as she got in the canoe and paddled across to bring him to the village. Blue Jay immediately set about his usual antics, shouting at the various ghosts. But to his great shock, this time they did not collapse. Instead, they just laughed at him. Blue Jay asked his sister, I don't understand. Last time when I shouted, they fell. And are you crying? Why are you crying, sister? With her face behind her hands, tears streaming down her face, she said, It is because you have died, Blue Jay. That is why you are here. It is the land of the dead. For once, he believed his sister and fell silent. I hope you enjoyed this tale of Blue Jay, the trickster, getting some, in my mind, well-deserved just desserts. I know I'm, as I've been going through the myths and legends of the various cultures, I've really been enjoying the Native American ones. They have a bit, they have a different type of personality to them. Simultaneously humorous and joyful, touched with melancholy. They they seem to be much more balanced as stories than some of the other myths I've encountered. They're short enough to be easily shared, unlike some of the longer things from, from other places, where you kind of have to just take snippets instead of tell the whole story. Are there any other stories you would like me to tell? Did you enjoy this story about Blue Jay and his trickster nature? Let me know in the comments. If you really enjoyed it and like seeing content like this, consider subscribing. That way you'll be notified anytime I upload a video. And until next time, walk in the light, my friends. Bye.